this. All right. And we share screen. And just before this short break, we were at the starting point of, um, of uh, developing uh, uh, um, uh, an M file. And we are going to use it to see how we can calculate or use uh, functions, built-in functions in MATLAB, built-in mathematical functions uh, to calculate something, to calculate some expressions. So for example, uh, let's write this example here on the right. Suppose uh, someone gave me values for uh, A equals, you know, whatever, five, uh, B equals three, and X equals, uh, X equals nine or anything. And, and I want to calculate the following expression. The expression says uh, that y equals e to the power minus a sine x, and then uh, plus b over square root x. So again, we have three numbers, a, b, x. And I want to calculate uh, y. y is an expression in terms of a, b, and x, except that there are functions, there are mathematical functions like sine and the square root and the exponential. The MATLAB built-in functions are helpful in this, although, although in principle, you can write your own sine function using you know, whatever sophisticated mathematics to calculate the sine x, but you don't have, this is like an overkill if you wanna write your own function for everything. It might be wiser to use the MATLAB built-in utilities to calculate the square root, to calculate the sine, and to calculate the exponential. So let's get started. I'm gonna define uh, the value of a, b, and x uh, on the top here of the script. So I'm gonna write a equals five, and I can put a semicolon as we learned. It's, it's gonna suppress writing this. In fact, on the same line, I don't need to go to another line. Uh, equal, um, by the way, there is a comment here because some people ask about this. Uh, if I don't leave a space between uh, the equal and, and the B and three, does this make a problem? It does not, but it's better to leave a space between the variable, the equal sign and the three, because it's for readability purposes, for you as a programming to as a programmer to read it uh, correctly allow me to leave these spaces and then a semicolon here. And finally, X equals uh, nine and I'm gonna put a semicolon. Guys, there is a piece of information that I will say now and I will keep emphasizing throughout the upcoming sessions because this is the hallmark of code development and code uh, uh, passing to others. You need to write comments on your code. Always, you need to write comments. Comments are useful because sometimes you write a piece of code and you leave it on your desktop. After one month, you go back to review it, you wanna edit it, you wanna modify it, and then you completely forget what you were doing there. So I would rather comment everything. For example, I can even, the comments in MATLAB, uh, I need to put this uh, percentage sign. And as you see, it becomes green and I can write whatever I want. For example, I can say this code, uh, was developed uh, on, you know, September 10, 2022 by, you know, Mustafa Youssef or anyone else. Uh, it calculates uh, Y uh, in, let's try this Y, in terms of uh, A, B, and X. Okay, so don't underestimate code commenting. It's an extremely important practice. I have to say in the industry or in research, it's very, look, this can be uh, uh, common up in a lot of jobs for you. It's very common that some company or some factory, they have a software that they use it for something, but they need to update it. Like some engineer wrote it a couple of years ago and that engineer left the place and you are the new hire they hired you and they are going to give you look take this code it does blah 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 improve it and make it to do other stuff 
if the previous engineer did not comment their code, it's going to be an extremely painful task for you to do anything about it, to, to upgrade it. So always, guys, always take this as a note. Always write comments in your codes. Very, very important. Okay. So I'm, 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 I'm saving this here. And now it's about time to write this expression. Okay, y equals uh, e to the power minus a. Can, if any one of you uh, have done MATLAB before or, you know, they learn at what we have done at, up to this, can they like work with me? How do, do I write y here? y equals what? EXP, Ben. EXP? Mm -hmm. uh, brackets. Uh -huh. Negative a. Very good. So, so that's basically the first part, the exponential. And then? Uh, multiplication. Hmm? Assign x. Very good. Plus. Open brackets. Between brackets, OK. Uh, B over uh, S. That's it, QRT. X. Okay, so between brackets. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Mustafa. This is basically, guys, how I invoke functions. I need to apply this function on something. That something has to go between brackets. So, for example, when Mustafa told me, uh, that when he uh, started working with me on the first term, e to the power minus a, it, it, the exponential function MATLAB is exp. And there is a comment here in sign. In, oh, okay, that's a very good question. I'm going to address this, Mustafa, just in a second. So uh, exp of minus a, right? So I need these brackets to put the something I'm calculating its exponential. Similarly, sine, uh, I need to calculate uh, sine x, so I need to put x between brackets. And finally, square root of x, so I need to put square root, uh, the x uh, between brackets, okay? So these brackets are for the stuff on which the function is gonna operate, okay? Now, Mustafa was, is following the cautious school where he actually insisted on putting brackets here. Uh, and I don't think you have to, like you're gonna get the correct answer even without them. However, being cautious is totally fine. That's also correct. In fact, if you want to be ultra cautious, if I can call it this way, ultra cautious, I can even put brackets uh, on the exponential and the sign just to ensure that this is going to be done first. Although you don't need this. It's just super, being super uh, cautious here. Uh, th there is uh, one question here and design for degree. So so that's, that, that's a nice answer. Uh, from Muhammad, so so let me so let me add an extra comment here. Uh, so the the debate here on the chat is: Do signs in MATLAB they work on radians or degrees? The default is radians. The default in any in mathematics in general and computer in general is in radians. In fact, let's test this down here. Uh, I'm I'm gonna clear the window here, clear, uh, or and I can do even CLC. Okay. So there is pi. Pi is a constant defined in MATLAB. So you don't need to define it. It's the irrational number pi. Okay. So pi, as we all know, is uh, 3.1416. You might wonder, really, does MATLAB only store four decimal digits after the decimal point? That's too inaccurate. The answer is don't worry. Uh, the rest of the numbers after the decimal digits are there in the memory. So don't worry. If you want to spell them out, you have to type for mat long. Take a note of this. For mat long, basically you are telling MATLAB, hey, if there is a real number, don't give me four digits after the decimal points. Give me more. And if I do this and type pi again, that's the pi that's in the memory of the MATLAB. So don't worry. It's not like MATLAB is saving only four digits. It has a lot. Now, I can calculate sine pi over 2. And sine pi over 2, if you remember from your basic trigonometry, uh, this is like nine, pi over 2 is 90 degrees, right, in, rate, in uh, degrees. So that should be 1. And, and that's what MATLAB is going to give me. But the, the default is 
uh, is it's in in uh, in radian. Some of the colleagues said that B sine uh, is uh, yeah. So so I'm not familiar with this D sign thing. So Muhammad suggested this. I'm not sure if I'm doing or uh, is it sign D? Someone said that I'm not familiar with this one to be honest. Uh, uh, of course, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, let's do this with 90 degrees. And yeah, sign D 90 degrees gives me one. So apparently, if you put a D after the sign, that means that the angle has to be in degrees. If you leave it without the D, it's in radius. Honestly, I'm unaware of this one. Uh, usually, I use a function that's called uh, rad to dig or dig to rad to change it from one to the other. Uh, in other words, I do the conversion first and then invoke the sine function. But this looks to me a clever way of doing it. So thank you, uh, Muhammad and Yusuf, for pointing this out. In fact, I wasn't aware of it. But getting back to our example, we are really, really working with radians. That's the default. It's the default in science and engineering. Okay. So let's try uh, to run this. How do I run this uh, script? If you want to call it a script, there are multiple ways of doing it. Uh, I can, and and actually, you know, let me take a second here before I run it because this is very intriguing. What your colleagues Yusuf and Muhammad said, and guys, I hope you learn this skill, um, very important skill. And let's take this opportunity to highlight this. You don't need to remember all the syntax in your memory. Uh, or you have your own text where it has all of the syntax that you, you don't, you don't have to. Instead, you can rely a lot on online forums uh, that can give you this information. For example, let's, let's do uh, a quick search about this sign D that the colleague suggested. If I go to Google here and I say, hey, uh, sign function in degrees in MATLAB, Okay, and, and and yeah, here we go. I got the in the first answer, and this is from what? In fact, let me remove the annotation or move the page a little bit to the right here. Yeah, it's from MathWorks website. So sine d returns the sine of the element x, which is expressed in degrees. Whenever you get stuck in something like this, try to search about it. You very very commonly will find an answer online. Okay, if if you copy a whole code online then it's important to cite it. So you write a comment, I found this piece of information and in website, blah, 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 and I accessed it on September 10, you put the date when you access. But the morale of the story is, you don't have to memorize everything. You, you just, whenever you need something, you can search about it uh, online. So let's stop here. And that's a very, very useful skill uh, that you need to practice. Now let's get to this simple code. How do I run it? I, I'm totally fine to run it in two ways, either by typing the run button here. So if I hit run, MATLAB is asking me, hey, this file is saved on the desktop, while now you are working in the documents folder. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to go to the desktop or bring the file to the documents? So I, I'm going to change folders. I'm going to go to the desktop. That's what I'm going to do. So now I'm in the desktop. You can see this yourself. Now I am in users21. This is my username and then desktop. Now I can hit run. And already, actually, I already hit run. And that's the answer. Testing functions, that's the name of the script. And it's telling me y equals this number. So that's the result of my calculation. There's another way to run a, a, a script like this is by typing its name. So let's do CLC. If I type, test, in fact, I can use the tab button. If I hit tab, it's going to give me the possible continuations. For example, test underscore function is a good, is the one that I want to run. Then I hit enter, hit enter again, and that's how I run my script, either using the run button or the, uh, typing the name of the script uh, in the screen. Okay. Any question on this simple stuff so far that we covered? Yes, Doctor, I have a question. Please. Uh, can we like uh, open multiple files and run them uh, in the command window at the same time? 
oh yeah, you can have tons of files. You can keep opening new ones. You see, I'm hitting new, new. This is Untitled 2, Untitled 3, Untitled 4. I can work on all of them if I need, yeah. So uh, so do I have to make them all open or can I, I can make a file and uh, somehow knows where to access it? Oh, you need to make files that call each other, right? Yeah. Mustafa, this is very important, very, very important, uh, uh, because in, in, in modular programming, something that we will get to uh, soon in the upcoming sessions, uh, very important in developing big projects where you your project is a software that exists in 10 files, it's not in one file. So this file is doing one job, this is going, doing another job, this is doing another job, and then there is a big file, like the big manager file, that tries to call them and coordinate coordinate among them. The only constraint, Mustafa, is they have to exist in the same folder. Okay, that's the main constraint. Uh, all of them have to exist in the same folder. For example, if I save all these on my desktop, then uh, that's fine. Or I create a folder for my project, I call it my project and save all of them. And then I can start calling one, uh, each one of them inside the other. I can do this if I want. And we will do exercises like this uh, in the upcoming sessions. But short answer to your message, yes, you can have mini files. They can call each other. Uh, it's better to have them in one folder. Although even if they are not in one folder, you can still go around this, but that would be a roundabout solution. It's better just to have them in one folder. Okay. Uh, other comments on this stuff? If no comments, I actually want to do one extra upgrade to this code. And that's, this is approaching us or getting us closer to you know real code development. Guys, um, what we have here is that I'm trying to calculate some expression and the input to that expression, let's use this computer science uh, 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 um, term, is hard coded. Hard coded means what? It, it's fixed. Like in other words, A is always five, B is always three, X is always nine. I, I um, don't have the freedom to change it unless, unless I enter inside the code and change it manually, right? Sometimes you want to offer this code to a user, right? To a customer. And you don't want the customer, you know, the customer is busy or maybe not professional, not knowledgeable in MATLAB or any programming language, and you don't want them to interfere with your code. Or sometimes you give them your code as a black box, so they are not even allowed to see what's inside. They cannot even edit it, okay? It's a black box for them because it's a commercial software. You don't want anyone to edit inside it, so you just give them as a black box. You, they cannot edit then how come the user can use it for different values? Suppose you want to change A, B, or X. In that, in that respect, it's better to ask for these as an input from the user, okay? Rather than the user interferes with the code itself. And now let's do this. I'm going to comment this out, and I'm going to put the other alternative. The other alternative is using the input command. Input allows you to ask the user for an input. Okay, so let's let's try this together. I'm gonna say that the variable a equals instead of five is gonna be input, and then between brackets, I can leave it this way. It's better to leave a message for the user. So please enter the value of a. Similarly. B, uh, instead of hard coding it, B is always three. Always can, three. Say, it say it again. I think uh, this is by mistake. This is to be muted. Uh, let's try this. Oh, I think that was fixed. Okay, no worries. Uh, and then the other one is B equal input. Similarly, I can do the same thing, maybe copy this, copy, paste, oh, paste it, please enter the value of B, and finally, X equals 
similarly input and please enter the value of x. Again, guys, the benefit of this uh, is that uh, instead of having the values hard coded and the user need to interfere with your software, sometimes you don't want the user to uh, interfere with this. So let's try to run this and see what's going to happen. Uh, let me actually clear the memory. Some people, uh, although I'm not necessarily a good practice, but if you want, some people start all their scripts with the command clear all right away. The purpose of clearing all the memory before you run the script. And sometimes this is okay, this is needed, especially if the memory is crowded with a lot of variables, but it's not, you don't have to. Let's keep it, uh, it's not gonna hurt. And then let's run the code. When I run this time, I hit the run button. Look at the command window. It's telling me, please enter the value of A. So I have to enter a value for A. So for example, let's enter five, uh, as in the previous example. And then it's telling me that A equals five. Uh, please enter the value of B. The value of B is, uh, you know, it was three. And then please enter the value of X. Let's try nine. And that's the same answer that we got before. So this way your code is interactive. So it needs an input from the user and the user has to interact with it, okay? Uh, I have to say, although this is something we are not gonna cover in this course, and it's easy to learn, like literally you can find a lot of videos on this on YouTube or tutorials. You can make this as a graphical interface for the user, like something fancy, a graphical interface that pops up for the user and the user will find, you know, a field where they can insert A, a field where they can insert B, you know, something that looks very nice. Uh, it's, you know, very nice and professional, but you don't have, I mean, what we did here is, is good enough, okay? Um, and, and, and that's basically the same answer that we got before. Sometimes you want your output to be displayed in a nice way. So sometimes you don't want just the standard uh, output from MATLAB that's staying y equal uh, 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 y equal one point blah blah blah. You can do this by suppressing this. So you ask MATLAB, hey, don't try the value of y, and you display it with the disp command. So this allows you to display something to the user. Okay. For example, you say uh, disp between brackets the value. Uh, of X, or maybe you can be polite to the user. Thank you for using my code. Okay, and a smile here. And that's actually uh, uh, the first message that, that appears. And then this, uh, the value of Y is, and then one more time, uh, it has to be, sorry, I made a mistake here. And then finally, you want to display the X itself. So this, uh, oh, sorry, the Y itself. So display Y. Notice something. And I have oh, to- This is uh, misspelled. Say again, Mustafa. Oh, okay. And one more time. I know what dips is, but what is dip? I have to make a comment here, very important. So any text, text, not, a mathematical variable has to be between either single quotes or double quotes. Both of them are fine, okay? There are like weird cases where why one is preferred to the other, but these are really exceptional cases when there's an apostrophe, for example, if your English contains an apostrophe, then double quote is better. But this is two, you know, two specific cases. In general, double quotes work like this, and single quotes work as well. Both of them are fine. You can use either of them, okay? Uh, but in the last display, I didn't put Y between quotes because I don't want Y as an English letter. I want as a text or yeah, as a text, I want Y, I want the number stored inside Y, okay? Let's try to run the script one more time. Uh, I'm gonna... Stop this and save and then run. Look, it's asking me for A. A equals two. 
asking me for BB equal whatever, eight. Asking me for X, let's do something fancy here. As a square root function, we are used to it accepting positive numbers or zero. Uh, someone is asking, uh, why clear all? Okay, Muhammad, I will, I, I will answer this. Sure, okay, let's answer. So clear all, Muhammad, because I want MATLAB to clear the memory of the computer before running a new computation. Uh, sometimes uh, this is extremely useful. Like for example, if there's an X already in the memory from a previous colleague who was using the laptop before me, and then my code also has X. So sometimes an interference can happen. So a clear all in the beginning is just to erase the memory. So actually let's do this, erase the computer memory before we start new calculation. That's the whole principle. If you don't like it, you can remove it if you want. Doctor, I think he, he says that it didn't work because uh, on the right, the variables are still existing. Really? Let's see. That's a good comment. Um, let's see. Um, I'm going to save one more time. And I'm going to hit enter. Oh, it's, this is still running. So let me close this. OK, so now this is closed. Let's run a game. I think it's just allocating them. So that's a good question, Muhammad. So it's just allocating them. It's allocating what's coming next, uh, but it, they don't have values. So let's actually try with, with some symbol case. Let's try A equal four, B equals six. And X, I'm gonna put a negative number, a negative four. Although we know that the square root in mathematics wants a positive or zero, but if it's a negative, it should give it should give me a complex number, right? For you, for those of you who studied complex analysis, it should give you a complex number. Let's see. So the answer, the output of the code. Uh, thank you for using my code. The value of y is. Look at the answer. The answer is a complex number. It's not a real number. The reason for this because we calculated the square root of a negative number. Okay, so. Let's go back to the question that was raised in the chat. No, clear all works. It just clears them. You know, there is no value inside them. So they are ready, but they are ready to accept a number. That's, that's the only thing. They are just ready to accept a new number. In other words, MATLAB is allocating a memory for them, but they don't have a value. So clear all work. It. Yeah. Any, is this clear, guys, or any comment on that? All right, very good, very good. Uh, oh, there's something. In, oh, good, very good, excellent. Thank you, Abra. Guys, let's uh, move on to something else. I'm going to save this uh, on the desktop. It's already saved on the desktop. So I will upload this to the Google Drive that we agreed on. But now we want to move on to basic plotting, basic plotting, OK? Uh, and for that purpose, Maybe I, I, I will need a new uh, file. I'm going to save it with a new name. Let's call it basic plotting number one. Plotting is super important, super, super important. You have to learn plotting because all the engineering problems, they require you to show the answer. And usually a graphical representation is the best thing in the world. Okay, uh, writing the file name didn't work with you. Can you also, Hen, can, can you explain more? Oh, writing the file name in the command window, right? That's what you mean. Uh, yes, that's what I mean. I tried to send the screenshot, but I'm unable to send it. Uh, I, write, I wrote the file name. Um, when I wrote Y, it worked, but when I wrote the file name, it didn't work. It just so, Hindi, can you share a screen? Uh, yes, I can. And I'm going to stop share. I, I'm stopped sharing myself. Okay. 
Yeah, guys, feel free to do this. That's actually recommended. I want to make sure that you can practice and do things on your own. Can you see my so, screen? Yes, yes. And you are okay. calling it testing underscore function. Very good. Yes, the same name. Okay, there. Okay, it worked now. Close the word. Okay, <laughs> very good. This is very the first good. of the word. <laughs> Yeah, Hen, this is very common. This is called this is called the professor effect. So something doesn't work, and I once the professor it work. Works, why it works? Yeah, it, it's it, it's working now, right? Okay. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, any other questions? Any other questions, guys? All right, if no questions, let's move on. Uh, we want to learn basic, uh, basic plotting. And we, sometimes you have a set of data and we will spend time on this because this is one of the most problematic things in MATLAB and we would like to treat it very, very carefully. Uh, so suppose someone, and let me write this example here. Uh, someone gave me these data, uh, like x equals uh, one. Um, maybe, maybe I should clear this. Some, someone gave me these values. They gave me a table for x and y. You know, when x was one, y was three. And when x was two, y was minus one. When x was three, y was 2.5. When x was four, y was five. When x was five, uh, y was whatever, seven, uh, and so on. Yeah, I can keep writing other things. And then I was asked, can you please uh, plot, uh, can you please, why this is not working? Yeah, can you please uh, plot uh, y of x? And the value of x and the values of y, each one of them form an array, array of data, right? And we need to now learn how to enter arrays. If you remember the slides I, I had in the very beginning of this course, I'm gonna share them again. I said that arrays will be introduced very, very late in the course because that later part is gonna be more specific. We are gonna go in depth into arrays. Here, we will introduce arrays just for the purpose of plotting, okay? Let's go, go back to MATLAB. So I wanna define an array that contains the Xs, an array that contains the Ys, and then use the plot command. There is a plot command in MATLAB, very simple. And I will start with the first, not a practical way at all, not a practical way, but you have to learn it still unpractical way of giving arrays to MATLAB. So let me write a comment here. Uh, this is first trial of entering arrays to MATLAB. Very, un, very impractical, but still, I have to put the, uh, but still useful to learn. Let's there is something called an index. So there is an array and there are indices in this array. For example, this is the first element and this is the second element. This is the third element. This is the fourth, and this is the fifth. Uh, and this is the fifth. Similarly, for the y variable, this is the first element, the second element, the third, the fourth, the fifth. It so happens for the x variable that the actual value of the element is matching the index. But this is not always the case. For example, look at y. The third index is 2.5. The fifth index is 7. The value of the fifth index is 7. Okay. So sometimes the indices can match the actual values and sometimes they, they are not. So I can insert the x's as follows. x of one equals one. And I can put a semicolon to suppress the right. 
x of 2 equals 2 x of 3 equals 3 x of 4 equals 4 and finally x of 5 equals 5 and mustafa tell me your question square brackets so mustafa the square brackets is a faster way of giving uh, an array to MATLAB. But I'm starting with this one because sometimes this is extremely useful. Sometimes. It's not a recommended way, especially if the array is long. Guys, imagine an array that contains 1,000 elements. You cannot type it manually like this. This will take forever. It's very slow. In spite of this, Mustafa, I am insisting on showing you this because it can very helpful later on. And you will you will see this yourself. But we will do the square thing that you suggested. Just be with me a little bit. Oh, what is meant by an array? What they are? This is a very good question, Amr. I should have started this from the beginning. Amr, sometimes you have the variable x that actually takes several values. For example, this is a function. Y is a function of x. And x can be one or two or three or four or five. So that means I need to store these values in the variable x. So they will be stored in the form of an array and elements one after the other, right? Similarly, the corresponding values of y are three minus one, 2.5, five, five, and seven. So it's a set of elements one after the one after the other, they are representing the variable y, okay? So it's bigger than scalar. You can think of them, if you are physics oriented, that this is like a vector and these are coordinates of the vector, right? Uh, although we know vectors are usually in three dimensional space, but you can go to thousand dimensional space. And these could be the components of the, of the vector if you are physics oriented, okay? So that's basically, uh, uh, oh, okay. And yet another question from Muhammad. Very, very good question. Muhammad, this is a source of, so Muhammad is saying, isn't the first index in MATLAB zero, right? So, and, and, and by that he refers to the following. The indices here are, that's the index and that's the value. So this is the value of X and that's the index. Uh, in fact, before I answer uh, the question from Muhammad one more time, allow me to do Y also. So y of one uh, equals three and y of two equals minus one and y of three equals 2.5 and y of four equals five and finally y of five equals seven. So again, let's hit the question from Amr one more time. What is an array? An array is when one variable takes many values and I'm storing all of them in just one thing. It's called an array, okay? And in fact, look at MATLAB here if you want, uh, uh, but, but we need to exclude this first to see it in the memory of the computer. You will see how it's stored in the memory and what is the size of this, uh, this thing. Uh, maybe let me start this code also with a clear all. Uh, when we execute it, okay? Uh, one more thing, where is the index and where is the value? One, two, three, four, five is the index. Index means is the location, where it is located in the array. It's the first element, the second element, the third element, the fourth element, okay? But what is the value of this element? Then it's what's written here on the right. Going back to the question from Muhammad, Look, in Python, the indices start from zero. So always start from zero. In MATLAB, they start from one, okay? So that's very important to recognize. Can you force MATLAB to start the index from zero? Yes, but we can learn this later when we discuss arrays in more depth. In today's session, we are only focused on the default in MATLAB. The MATLAB default is arrays start from one. In Python, they start from zero, okay? Uh, there is one more question. Yeah, yeah Muhammad is responding uh, that it's not starting from zero, and that's correct. In MATLAB, we start from one. In Python, we start from zero. Okay. I hope I hope Amr and and Muhammad this clarifies your questions uh, carefully. Uh, 
Uh, now, and in fact, before I do the plotting, I'm actually gonna right away uh, do this. Um, I'm gonna hit the, the run command because I want to see how these are stored in the memory of the computer, just the arrays, so equal. Yeah, they are here, they are written on the right. Look, on the workspace here, the X contains five, five values, one, two, three, four, five. The Y contains five values. It's size one times five because it's one row that contains five elements, okay? In terms of computer memory, it's 40 bytes. It occupies an amount in the memory of your computer that's 40 bytes because it has five elements. And we just learned it in the first part in today's session that each number in MATLAB occupies eight bytes. So it contains of the memory 40 bytes, okay? Uh, I hope I, I, this can open a way of estimating how RAM memory your MATLAB software can use, right? If you know the variables and the size of the arrays, you can have an estimation. So this computer here I have here, I think it has 16 gigabyte of RAM memory. So I have to be careful. Does my code exceed this or not? But this is a bit advanced. We, we are not gonna hit this limit soon. Mariam, you have a question. Uh, Doctor, when I run uh, the basic plotting file, uh, it writes in the command window that it's basic, basic plotting, but there is no y equals 3, negative 1, 2.5. Is that okay? It's okay, Mariam, because we put these sem semicolons. Uh, actually, I should put the semicolon because the semicolon suppress the writing. Okay. Okay. In fact, if you want the computer to display them, you can actually ask it this x and this y. And in fact, if I run here again, you will see what is written in the command window. In the command mm -hmm. window, you see all of them are written here. But, but uh, you was using the uh, semicolons and the, at the same time, there's y3, negative one, 2.5. In my uh, MATLAB, in the, there's- In the only... workspace. No, I mean in the command window. Really? I didn't have them, no. Like no, if no. I remove these, so let's see. If I remove these and type CLC, let's actually run this. So I run it, there's nothing. Yeah, okay. okay yeah, got I it. don't have anything. Yeah, okay, I don't you. have anything. I have to disk to display or I can find them in the workspace. Okay, okay. thank you. Very good, thank you, Mike. All right, now let's do the plot. The plot is easy. It's just the plot X and Y and nothing else, okay? And now, uh, in fact, if I run this, uh, if I hit run, uh, guys, do you see the plot or do I need to stop share? No, you can. can. Very good, very good. Guys, that's the plot. These are the values. That's the Y axis, that's the X axis. Uh, plots can be edited. Uh, and that, say it again. We, we can't see it. Oh, we cannot. Okay. Let me stop share. It's shared in another uh, window, so it has all. Okay. How about now? Yes. Okay. Um, very good. Very good. So that's the plot. That's the, the Y axis. That's the X axis. And you remember when X was one, Y was three. When X was two, Y was minus one. When X was three, Y was 2.5. You know, even if you put your mouse here on the plot, you can actually see what's the value of X and what's the value of Y, okay? Guys, graphs should be labeled and should be made beautiful because having a visually appealing graph can make your data clear. If you write an engineering report, things can be clear and nice and attractive to the eye. You can do this editing manually by the hand uh, or from a graphical interface, that's what I mean, by using the edit and then you hit figure properties. Uh, and then the figure properties window will start to pop up on the right. This is not my recommended way of doing it. 
but just I'm showing it to you because it's good for someone who's still starting learning MATLAB. And then you wanna, for example, edit the line itself. You can double click the line. So double click the line, just keep hitting on it, on the line. You can change its color from here. For example, you can make it red if you like. Uh, you can change the font, you can make it wider. Oh, sorry, let me double click again. You can make it wider. For example, instead of half, you can make it three, so it's a thick font. Uh, you can put markers, like on the data, I can put a marker here and I can make it, for example, diamond. And I can control, so these are diamonds that represents the data points. I can make these diamonds thicker. For example, I can make them you know, size 10, so they are larger and so on and so forth. I can label the axes. How do I label the axes? From the insert menu here, I can insert X label and I can say this is, for example, the X variable and say this. Uh, and I can insert a Y label and I can say this is the, uh, you know, Y variable. I can put a title for the figure, insert title, and I can say, my first part, okay? And, and I can do many things, uh, uh, annotate the figure, make it nice. I can even control the font of the axes. Like if I can double click here, I can control the font, font size, I can make it 16. So that's how you can play with the, the, with the figure. Once you are happy with your figure, once you think it's good, you can actually start saving it as a figure or as a MATLAB figure or as an image. For example, I can, so what I did here is I save as, and I can, I like personally, the one that usually generates high resolution images is the TIFF, uh, TIFF image. So I choose this and I can call it my first plot and save this. Uh, it takes a time to, you know, to, to just get it. And it's saved on my desktop. So I can go to my desktop uh, and, you know, that's the figure, right? I hope you see it now. This is an image saved on my desktop, okay? Uh, I have, before we end this session, because there's something very important. Um, let me go back again to MATLAB. I'm going to close this. Uh, guys, do you see the MATLAB window now? I'm, I'm back to MATLAB. Yes. Very yeah, good. we do. Very good. Guys, the way I inserted the arrays is not the most practical one. In fact, I will show you a better way of inserting the array. And next session, we will have even yet a much, much, much better way of inserting an array. Much more practical. Okay. Very good. Uh, let me, I'm not going to delete this. Guys, don't delete anything. You just uh, need to comment out uh, and then uh, we can learn the better way. Better way is what Mustafa said a couple of minutes ago through the square bracket. Basically, x equals, and I don't need columns, uh, commas, or anything. I can say one and leave a space, two, leave a space, three, leave a space, four, leave a space, and five, leave a space and close the square bracket. And for Mariam's comment, I will I'm gonna put a semicolon here to suppress MATLAB from writing it. Yes, someone <laughs> hand said it, it's as a matrix. Yes, now it looks like a matrix. Although what I did before is a still matrix insertion, except in a very slow way, very, very slow way. Although it's slow, I insist on showing it because it's going to be useful later and you will appreciate it later, not now. Uh, let me do the y. y equals between square brackets 3, minus 1, 0.5, 5, and 7. Let's put a semicolon. And I did the same thing. I inserted x and y. Let's test this together. I'm going to save it. Let's make sure we save. You, you introduce a modi. Let me show you this, especially if you haven't used MATLAB before. This is a new piece of information. Oh, ah, it was saved. Let me do yet another edit. Sorry. Uh, 
this clear? Let me make it clear all. Actually, yeah. When I typed all here, there is a star that appeared next to the name. Do you see the star where my mouse is? A star. A star means that you modified this file, but it's not saved yet, and you have to save it. I think MATLAB automatically saves every couple of seconds. So if you leave it a couple of seconds, I think it's going to save automatically. But it's better uh, that you save yourself with the save button here. Uh, and, and now the, the star disappeared. So you know that the new updates has been saved. So these are the X and Y. I can hit run again. Or as we learn it, I can get I basic plotting. And yeah, we have the. Uh, uh, figure one more time, okay? Uh, <coughs> we can upgrade this figure and writing its uh, labels and stuff like that from the script itself, but we will leave this to next class. Uh, let's take this comment from the chat. Is the place one, for example, for row or column? That doesn't mean, is the place one for row or column? Maria, uh, sorry, Hend, Hend is asking this. So Hend, this is a good question, but we, we will illustrate it more in the arrays discussion. I have to say that the way I wrote it, guys, you can forget this comment if you feel saturated today. You can forget, but we will discuss it later on in maybe session number five or six. If we leave it this way, this is a row matrix a row of a matrix. If I put commas here, or semicolons, if I put a semicolon here, and a semicolon here, and a semicolon here, and a semicolon here, this is a column. It's not a row. So it became a column. It's like I'm rotating. And when I do this, I have to do the same thing with the Y. If you don't like this comment now, because it was mentioned quickly without elaboration, Please forget about it. I was just trying to address Hind's question. So Hind, in short answer to your question, what you see here are two rows, two row matrices, and I'm plotting them with each other. Okay. Aren't there like commas between the, you don't have to. So Muhammad is asking, uh, Muhammad, you don't have to put the commas. If you want to put the commas, put them, but they are not going to make any difference. Okay, and to save time, because we think about, we, we, when you code, you always need a, to think about efficiency. You don't have to type the co co columns, okay? And as I said, excellent. And as I said, next time, uh, we will show yet a better way of representing arrays, and we will dig deeper into plotting. Thank you, Muhammad, and thank you, Hen. So guys, we are gonna stop here. I don't wanna go over time. Uh, if you have suggestions of how we can improve this, I, I mean, there's one element that we didn't practice today because there were a lot of introduction and we took like 10 minutes in the beginning to fix things up. Uh, in the upcoming sessions, there will be something where we make a breakout room where you guys will work on your own. And I didn't want to do this today because I noticed like a couple of you didn't have an access to MATLAB yet. So hopefully, hopefully next Saturday, all of you guys will have MATLAB installed. And always there will be an exercise. We finish an exercise, you guys will do a similar one on your own in the breakout room. I will room around you and see how's the progress. And then we come back to the main room, solve it together. Today, we didn't want to do this because not all of you have MATLAB ready. The second comment, if you have a suggestion to improve what we are doing, please send to the kind organizers of this event, the ASME student chapter at, at AUC, at Mechanical Engineering AC, please send them a suggestion and they will kindly let me know about them and see how can we implement some of them if need. All right. Thank you so much, guys. See you next Saturday. Thanks a lot. Will the recording be uploaded? Yes, it will be uploaded to the drive with, you know, a couple of codes that we wrote today. All these will be present on the drive. Thank you so much, guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and see you later. Bye.